Welcome biologists, today we're looking at 4.2.1 from the OCR specification for A-level biology, which is biodiversity. We're looking at specification point E, which is how genetic biodiversity can be assessed using calculations and including calculations. Now, you do need to know this calculation for your exam. It is quite easy though and quite straightforward to use and process. Now, don't forget earlier on in the specification for biodiversity, we had to look at what biodiversity was and that included habitat variation. It included um, genetic variation and also species biodiversity. So we need to be able to measure each one of those and genetic biodiversity is measured using this um, polymorphic gene loci equation. It is quite simple to use, I'm going to show you how to use it. So basically what, what this is calculating here is the diversity of the genetics by looking at, um, so basically polymorphic gene is where you have more than one allele present. So the more alleles you have, the, the more biodiverse that um, the genetics of the population is. Now this is usually used on um, small populations such as those in zoos or rare breeds or pedigree animals. Uh, so you can monitor how biodiverse those populations are in terms of the genetics. You want to try and increase the genetic diversity of those populations so that you're not putting them in, th in threat of um, extinction. Because the more biodiverse genetically a population is, the more likely it is to withstand any changes to the environment. Okay, so this is the uh, equation that we need to know. So the proportion of polymorphic gene loci is equal to the number of polymorphic gene loci over the total number of loci. And we're going to look at um, some examples of this. So this is quite a simple example where I've got um, two different species of Drosophila and we've looked at 25 gene loci and for species A there were 12 and for species B there were 15. So uh, if you want to pause it and try and figure this out before I show you, by all means do pause it now. But this is how we work it out. For species A, I do 12 because we had 12 loci here and I had um, 25 uh, in total that were looked at. So 12 over 25. Um, so And then for species B, it would be 15 because that's how many were polymorphic over the 25 that I looked at. So that means that species A is 0.48 and species B is 0.6 therefore species b is more genetically diverse now this is a quite a simple way to look at it and i think it is quite straightforward now there are more um complicated questions so i'll give you a minute to read this if you want to pause it and um have a look at it so basically we have two populations a and b and we have three different loci so we're not just looking at one position now we're looking at three different loci but we know that there were 60 looked at for each uh, one of A and there were 40 from B. So again, if you want to pause it and try and figure this one out, by all means, please do. You need to try and work out an average for population A and an average for population B. Do you want to pause it and have a look and have a go now? Please do. I'm going to show you the answer on the next slide. Okay, so for population A, we had 52, 50 and 57. So I do each one of them divided by 60 because 60 was the total number of individuals or loci that I looked at. And these were the three different um, polymorphic gene loci that I found. That gives me 2.64. And then I divide it by three because I looked at three different uh, individuals um, to give me 0 0.88. I do the same for population B, which will give me 0 0.75. So therefore, I can conclude that A is more genetically diverse. Now, if you have a look here, I used 40 here at the bottom here. That's because you looked up 40 individuals or loci for population B, whereas at population A, if we look back at the previous slide, we had uh, 60 in this population. Here's another example if you want to pause it and have a go, and I'll show the answer on the next slide. Okay, so for population A, we should have got 0.898. And for population B, we should have got 0.854. So therefore, population A is more genetically diverse. It'd be more likely to be able to withstand a change and more likely to survive because it has a higher genetics and allele diversity within the population. So that is basically it for this lesson objective. You just need to be able to apply and use and remember this formula. And remember, this is how you measure genetic biodiversity. Guys, all the best in the exam. Do not use your words, it, they, amount, or size. Use good scientific terminology that explains your answers to the utmost detail. Good luck.